Welcome everybody, my name is Zexor, thanks for joining me. This is my Let's Play of The Vanishing of Ethan Carter. Okay. The Astronauts, the company that made this, uh, recommended that you play this at home alone with the lights off at night. So, that is what we're doing. This isn't a horror game exactly, this is actually uh, a, a thriller, or not a thriller exactly even, it's, it's an adventure game based off of weird fiction. So it has like some creepy elements and sort of some horrific feelings and some new supernatural stuff, but it's not actually a horror game. So we'll, there might be a couple scary moments they said, but uh, shouldn't be really a horror game right now. So I've wanted to do this for a long time. I downloaded it, um, or bought it I should say, uh, last uh, Wednesday, Tuesday or Wednesday. So I pre-ordered it. And then when it released, the day it released, uh, I guess GOG.com was having some issues, and so I couldn't actually download it, and then I went away for the weekend. So this is the first chance I've had to play it since the weekend, uh, so we'll just get right into it, shall we? It's actually not like a creepy, creepy, it's not creepy yet. Well, maybe it'll be creepy. It's supposed to be kind of weird and uneasy, yeah. A little bit strange. Ethan Carter is not there. This game is a narrative experience that does not hold your hand. Ethan Carter I didn't know, but he knew who I was. When the police won't help you and the priests don't believe you, you call on Paul Prospero. You call on me. If you're a kid like Ethan, you're right. Plenty do. Ethan's letter started out just like any other fan mail. But soon there were mentions of things no little boy should know about. There are places that exist that very few people can see. Ethan could have drawn a map. I hadn't entered Red Creek Valley yet, but already I could feel its darkness reaching out for me. Finding Ethan Carter wasn't going to be as easy as knocking on his door. I was too late for that. To find Ethan, I had to figure out what this place was trying to hide from me. Interesting. Alright, so... My understanding is the background of the story is, as you said, as uh, your character said, uh, Ethan contacted you mentioned there were some concerns and problems and things going on and uh, he um, contacted Prospero for help trap wow why I can barely hear there's a trap already Well, that doesn't bode well. Uh, let's go closer if I can. Okay, so this is a supernatural power. You can sense something about the surrounding area, but you need more things put the way they were, or whatever, to be able to make full sense of what's going on. Maybe I shouldn't be traveling on the side of the railroad tracks. Let's go back to the railroad tracks. <laughs> get myself killed. Um, so he contacted... Uh, screw it, I'm going to go over this way too. Uh, he contacted Prospero uh, because of, like he said, some things he'd seen. Things that were disturbing. And um, he basically uh, was really concerned and... Reach, reach, reached out. Whoa. Another trap, huh? What the crap? The whole area is full of traps. Really? Okay, so there are a couple different traps. If I cannot fall into traps as I go, maybe I can get a full picture. Uh, anyway, reach out to Prospero for some help. Uh... So, um, so that's where we are. Prospero, 
uh, kind of a super supernatural investigator, I guess. He, meaning, although he may do it also, right? I think it actually is. Yeah, if there's like something supernatural, unusual, weird going on, he will uh, he'll investigate. But um, geez. all kinds of stuff. All right. So yeah, this is the third piece. Okay, we're not quite there. We're getting a fuller picture though of what's going on. Um anyway, he uh he investigates this kind of stuff and he has as you can see with these senses, uh you know, as he senses stuff as he gets close, he uh can kind of I guess you can run too. Uh he kind of um he he's got this like supernatural ability kind of connects to things. Not exactly like a psychic, but kind of, I guess. Anyway, and so because he can connect to things like that, he can kind of get an idea, piece together a puzzle of what had happened. I have a better idea. Jeez. <laughs> Startling me. Ah. Man, there's a lot of traps. Okay. They say they don't hold your hand, right? So you can go, well, I mean, I don't know about everywhere, anywhere, anywhere, but you can go pretty much anywhere. It's a fairly open world, it seems, right? I mean, I'm, like, totally off the beaten path, I think. I think the uh, obvious way to go is follow the road tracks. I don't, you'll notice I don't say the way you're supposed to go, because obviously it's supposed to be free, but, uh, like, free roaming, somewhat at least. But, uh, but the way that it seems... Like a lot of people would probably go, just like along the tracks. By doing that, though, um, you might miss out on some other clues about things that are going on. So, I don't know. Going this way, maybe? Along the path, and there'll be another trap probably on the path or nearby. Let's see. Yeah, I think there's one coming up. I don't know, though. Nope, not there. Sex on a trap everywhere. We're gonna kill. I might. I might get killed. It's true. I might get killed. It's not really. I don't think there's a jump in this, or if there is, at least spacebar is not jump. What do, uh, options? Controls. Is there a jump? Uh, where are we? Uh. Keyboard mouse settings. Crouch, left control, run is shift. I've been using that. Doesn't really look like there's a jump. Open vision is spacebar. So spacebar is not. You don't really jump in this, looks like. Okay. Alright. Alright. Um, that's creepy, creepy. The trap everywhere is actual. I know, right? There are traps everywhere. I'm kind of wondering, like, what's the... Trying to snag specific people? Oh, uh, there's that. Which would go, yeah, there we go. I was like, why isn't it flipping up? There we go. Okay, there's... What are we now? There we go. Read. All right. Sap by Ethan Carter. An old man came to the forest every day to drink sap from the trees. To get there, the old man had to step around many dangerous traps. The villagers believe this old man have believe this old man have hidden a jade amulet in the forest. But the old man wanted the villagers to believe this because then they wouldn't search the forest for treasure, and not drink his sap. Once cool, or one cool fall night, someone set fire to the forest, and the fire spread to the village. The old man escaped the fire by covering himself in sap. When he returned to the village, he found all the villagers' bones. The old man sat down and cried. Then he found more sap to drink. Oh, and you can rotate it too. So there's... Oh, man. 
This is beautiful. They use a technology called photogametry uh, to create all these images of things. This is just incredible detail. So good. This, you know what game this reminds me of, right? This reminds me, in a lot of ways, this reminds me of Gone Home. So pretty. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, okay, that, so that's how you get the text that way. Uh, zoom. I don't know that we're going to get any clues by zooming, though. Okay. Looks like probably okay. Okay, so accept. Ethan, I told you. You can't be here. But, Gramp, I wrote something for you. That's real nice. Thank you. Just, just leave it. I'll read it later. Okay. See, there's more stuff here, too. Cigarettes. Maybe a gin bottle of some kind. Is this as well. One Dead in House Fire by Jeff Germo, Germu. Bayfield County Fire da Bayfield County. Fire damaged a historical home in Red Creek Valley Wednesday morning, according to officials from the Bayfield County Fire Department. Family of six was asleep when the blaze broke out at the remote base. Remote house, I should say, sorry. Once uh, owned by Albert Vandergriff by the Ogden Lake in Red Creek Valley. Gail Carter, 58, was pronounced dead at the scene. Remaining family members were able to escape. Carter's husband, Edwin, 62, told investigators he may have fallen asleep with a lit cigarette in his hand. Firefighters were dispatched to the scene at 11.22 or at 1.22 a.m., I think it was, and remained at the scene until around 5 a.m. Wednesday, they returned to the property, uh, house later, uh, to exiting this, etc., etc., et it's burned, okay. Oh, whoops, hang on. Let's rotate it. Oh, there's more Fandegriff. Okay, so Albert Fandegriff had owned uh, the house. Okay. After heated public hearing, no answers for Vandegriff heirs by Tom Outen. Bayfield County members of the Vandegriff family again gathered in the Bayfield County Courthouse today to debate the fate of the Vandegriff fortune. Uh, which has remained in escrow since 1961. Fan Peter Albert, something died in a mine after effects destroyed Vandegrift severely. Okay. James Vandegrift, 38, of Chicago, argued that his father's demands were unreasonable and that many Vandegrift mem family members have personal reasons for wanting to avoid living in Red Creek Valley on the Vandegrift estate, as stipulated in the Elder Vandegrift's will. The recent fire in which the Vandegrift home was damaged, he said, only underlined his family's concerns. Since 1967, the Carter family has lived upon the former Vandegrift estate as, a temporary, as temporary caretakers. Okay, so... A lot of the Vandegrift family members don't want to live in the house in Red Creek Valley for whatever reason. Carter family lived there as uh, basically temporary caretakers, and then Gail Carter was pronounced dead after a fire in the house. Interesting. All right. So getting some more clues. All right, and okay, that's pretty cool. That's definitely interesting. So whatever is going on whatever it is, could definitely be related, in one way or another anyway, to the the Vandegrift house and the, the problems there, and the Carters being caretakers and so on. Here, nope. Just some rocks collapsed. Some kind. Or it could be could be a really old railroad that people don't use, right? That may be part of it. Almost looks like somebody collapses so the train couldn't go farther. Interesting. Alright. Zexor! Yeah? They're just as 
in trouble as you are when you play games. So I'm I'm in trouble when I play games. Yes, always in trouble, always doing things incorrectly, getting yourself killed. Yeah, maybe maybe it's true. All right, a rickety old bridge. Red Creek Valley seemed like a quiet, ordinary place. I've learned two things in my life. No place is truly quiet, and nowhere is really ordinary. Ethan warned me about that. Warned me not to be fooled by what I saw here. He didn't need to worry. I'd worked dozens of cases, hundreds. This would be my last one. Last one. I wonder if that means he's going to retirement, or if that means that he gets killed or is almost killed or something. Yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting. I don't know if they I don't know that they actually let you fall off of things. They might though. Right? So I kinda wanna be careful because I'm not sure. I have not played this like a demo or anything of this even or a beta or anything. So I really don't know what to expect from gameplay mechanics here. So, I did uh, just a little tiny bit, just to get an idea of kind of how it was working, because I was excited about the game. I did see a little tiny bit uh, of a video where you have this, for example, you can inspect the train. So, but you'll notice, so here's, it's not exactly a train, right? It's kind of more like a, uh, an engine, I guess, or whatever. But anyway, uh, you'll notice that goes, that follows the, tra the tracks across the bridge, and it's collapsed farther down, like we saw before, so... Interesting, all right. Blood, animal, human, accident, murder, crankshaft, fresh scratches, recently used, crank. So this is, uh, this is a mechanic that I learned about in the brief uh, early thing I saw. So all these words going together. What you want to do is turn so that the words line up. And once you get there, that and it'll kind of give you an indicator of where you want to look. So we see the crankshaft is near the side of water and you can see there's the bridge across the way, right? So if we look, that's the bridge we're seeing there. So the crank is probably going to be down there somewhere. Um, Let's see what we can see inside here. Forward, back, turn off. Oh, so it's on right now? Uh, alright, so uh, S is back. Oh, right, it's okay. So we need that crankshaft to move this. Got it, that's why it didn't move. You need right there. Okay, so. I don't know, there's not combat or anything in this game from what I've heard, from, from what I've read and stuff. So since there's no combat, I expect there may be creepy moments and stuff, and like piecing things together. There might even be some danger. My guess is it's going to be like a cutscene kind of danger. Um, but I don't know for sure, right? I might have to run like in Amnesia or something. It's difficult to say. Difficult to say at this point. Look at this is so beautiful. Look at look at the quality, the leaves and the blades of grass. I mean just so good. So so good, okay. And it's not hold control to crouch, I guess. You you tap it. Crouch, uncrouch, so. Sex, so what happened to Ethan and the people in the town? We're trying to figure that out, Squeaky. I'm not sure yet. Hopefully we'll piece that together. Hopefully we'll find enough clues to figure things out. But I, it's hard to say, right? Uh, oh, rope. Cut ties. Untied, tied. No blood. Rope.
Okay, so we got a rope that was like tied in a oh that's oh man. Severed legs? Eesh. Rest of the corpse. Blood trail. Victim dragged away, crawled away. Severed legs. So we got severed legs, we got rope. We got a train engine up there that doesn't have. Alright, let's follow the blood trail, shall we? Ah, uh, here's where the guy died. Suck. Blood from legs, blood from, blood from. Fractured skull. Cause of death, blood loss, head trauma. Oh yeah, it looks like his head was beat in. Oh, it makes sense. There was a trailer where you saw a guy beating uh, his head in, so... Okay. Okay, what happens here is if this doesn't open enough, just like with the, uh, with the traps, means there are more clues to find. Not yet. Death scene. Disturbed by third party. Ended by... Eroded by time. So, uh... What was explained is he, uh, this victim, remembers things a certain way at the time of his death. So we have to put things back the way they were at the, when he died. So then he'll recognize him, and then he can give us a clearer picture of what happened. So it's kind of a cool concept. It makes sense, right? Somebody who died, you know, would only remember things. Looks like they're not going to let you jump off cliffs. It's probably better. Uh, so you don't, like, kill yourself on accident or whatever. Um... Makes sense though, right? Somebody who died is very likely to only remember things, right, how they were when they died. They're not going to know after the fact. So, in order to make sense of it, you need to have things appear the same. Okay. Well, we know the crankshaft's by the water, so I think maybe we're going a little bit too far to solve his death or to see more about his death or whatever. So, let's. Okay. In there, okay. Zexor, where is the crankshaft? I don't know. I'm looking. I'm not sure. It's over here near the water, according to the vision I had, right? So, let me see. Aha! Here we go. Rotate. Oh! There's blood on there. So this was probably what was used to beat his head in. Well, that's uncool. Uh, See what I mean, though? This is so detailed. It's so good. Beautifully, beautifully done. Well done, astronauts. Well done. All right, guys. Um, anything else over here? There's anything else? Looks like we're kind of dead, again, dead ending there. So, okay. We'll keep going this way. Uh, I didn't see anything on the way down here either. Anything else to interact with, inspect or whatnot, so... Zexo, this is a little creepy. I know, right? Like, big murder mystery? You don't know what's going on? Who killed him? Or if he, assuming, assuming somebody killed him, but again, you've got what? Inspect. Dried grass. No sun. Rectangle shape. Rail car from the bridge. And the rail car, in case we'd not determined that already, is over there. So this will show us the rail car that we already know is there. So there you go. Okay. And we've got this. Diesel fuel gasoline. Dropped carelessly in a rush on purpose. Canister. Alright, so... I'm trying to put things back. I probably want... To move the rail car back at least, right? Okay, let's do that. 
There might be more to inspect too as we get things back. Like some of those look like, like the rope and stuff. Like, how do we see you know who is tied up or whatever, right? So alright. Just keep tapping and then it starts. Okay, enter. Yep. Now let's go. S is back, right? Sure, how real car about here? Let's see if this is good. Am I in the right place? I'm not sure. Slightly forward, actually, looks like very slightly forward. Right. Oh, uh, yeah, I could just look and see the canister on the side. And I know I've gone far enough. Okay, let's try a little bit forward. No. Nope. I think too far. I think that maybe. Alright, let's exit and see if this is lined up now. Looks like it's pretty close anyway. Uh, still not though. I gotta go up to this. So I basically have to go to that pole. Oh, okay. I don't. I mean, I don't know, Rob. But I think you need it pretty close to exact for them to be able to remember. Okay. So I want to forward. You know, back a little. Back. Back. Uh, that's probably close enough. I think. Let's try again and see. See how we're doing now. Yeah, I think that's pretty much right, right? Look, there's dead grass right there. But then it's live grass on the other side. That's probably right. Alright, so let me turn it off. Turn off. Okay. I wonder if there are more um I wonder if there are more clues I can get also. Uh, now, from here, for example. Maybe not. Not yet. Nope. Nope. Alright, let's see if I can get more information from him now. Close, but still not enough, huh? I wonder what else I need to do. I move the rope at all or something? Um, well, there's another piece of the puzzle that we'll find out in the next part. So thank you, everybody, for watching. This has been my Let's Play Part 1 of The Vanishing of Ethan Carter. My name is Zexor. If you've enjoyed this, please like, favorite, comment, subscribe, share the video. Tell people that I'm doing the series. In the next part, um, we'll try to piece together the next piece of the puzzle. Piece the piece. Yeah, that's right. Anyway, uh, we'll try to put together uh, whatever pieces we're missing and figure out where we go from here um, to solve this mystery. So thanks everyone for watching, and I will see you in the next part. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at ZexorWeglin, Twitch ZexorWeglin, Facebook ZexorWeglin, and I'll try to let you know about 12 to 24 hours before I live stream next. So if you so desire, you can watch that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next part. Till next time. Peace.